Not every project works, and that's okay. You may recognize this test bench. I use it for a number of my bare metal hardware tests. But most recently, this was my two gamers, one CPU, no virtualization. And for that video, I used the integrated graphics on the Ryzen APU and an RX 5 580. And that worked pretty well. It, it worked as well as I could have expected. I loved it, it was great to game on. But before I made that video, what I really wanted to do was use something like one of these. This is called a zero client. So you might be familiar with thin clients like this or like these. These have actual processors in them and they run actual operating systems. Now usually when these thin clients are deployed, they don't actually run an operating system that does something. They use remote desktop or some other remote access protocol to connect to a server somewhere. So they're really just used for displays and interfaces. But they still are a whole computer and you can use them as a whole computer if you use a lightweight operating system like Linux. So when I was searching for thin clients and saw this $9 zero client on eBay, I had to figure out what it was. It's got a mini USB, not micro, but mini. We got some USB 2 ports, some analog audio, and VGA. And this thing is about 12 years old, so that I.O. is not surprising. But I figured, hell, 10 bucks, shipped, I can play with it on Linux, make a video about it, right? Wrong. Definitely not. So I have here a collection of a bunch of different hardware that I've tried. And some of it works and some of it doesn't. And some of it I haven't had a chance to test yet because it just came in the mail. And this varies from very much unsupported on Linux to unsupported on my hardware to possibly supported maybe some proprietary drivers, junk like that. So bottom end of the scale, we have the Wise Zero client. This is USB 2. It uses a chipset made by SIS and the drivers for this in the Linux kernel date back to 2005 and haven't been touched since. So basically, on a modern version of Linux, this doesn't work. Which is very sad, because this, this could make it kind of a nice thing. I don't know what you'd use it for, but if you need to hook a whole bunch of screens up to a Linux system, it, it would do it, over VGA, of course. In the evolutionary tree of USB display adapters, we have the pluggable. This is another USB 2-based device, but this time we get DVI, Ethernet, USB 2, yeah that. And this uses a protocol called DisplayLink, and the USB 2 DisplayLink drivers are part of the Linux kernel. So drivers for this guy, even though he's about the same age as this guy, this guy made it into the Linux kernel with a relatively well-supported frame buffer driver. This guy made it into the Linux kernel with a completely unsupported driver that doesn't have a frame buffer and relies on a bunch of user space stuff that's built into the X server as a module which of course doesn't work anymore 10 years, 15 years later. So what about modern solutions? What if you wanna plug a whole bunch of monitors into your computer, or you wanna do multi-C like I did and don't wanna pay for an extra graphics card? Well, I tried both of these, and neither of these are mine, I just borrowed them. These are both USB 3 laptop docks, laptop docks. And really they just take a USB-C connector and split it out to a whole bunch of ports. So this guy's got, looks like he's got an SD card reader, a mini display port, Fancy Ethernet jack, HDMI, a bunch of USB 3s, and another USB C. And this guy's got, he's got a VGA, wow, VGA in 2022. Uh, RJ45 Ethernet, some USB 3, an SD card reader, two HDMIs, oh, he's got a bunch of displays, and a USB C that's just for power. So you'd think, you just take this, plug it into my system, it works, right? Well, not really, as I learned. So this one, you plug it in, you do LS USB, and you find out that the display adapter actually uses DisplayPort. So because one of the alternate modes of USB-C is as DisplayPort, it uses three of the four lanes as DisplayPort and one of them as USB. And that is a perfectly valid solution, which works on many laptops. Does not work on my test bench, does not work for me. Oh well. So now we get to this gem. This is the most interesting of all. And I might still make a video about these two guys in the future because they could actually work on Linux, but so far I've struggled. This is essentially the modern day version of the pluggable. This is a USB 3 display link adapter. So all four lanes on the connector here are USB 3. They go into a USB 3 hub where it splits out the high speed ports and all the other stuff connected. But then off the USB 3 hub is an actual USB 3 video card. And that uses the DisplayLink protocol, which a lot of operating systems support. Of course, Linux doesn't. And that's not to say Linux doesn't want to. DisplayLink 
produces a driver, but it's proprietary. So like NVIDIA, you have to deal with all their crap. And it's kind of unfortunate, but um, it doesn't seem to work well on modern versions of Linux. I struggle to get it to work. I wanted to use it as a multi-seat setup, where my nice little dock here would be my second user, and my integrated graphics would be my first user. And that was my goal, and it didn't really work, so I ended up down that path. So that's my roundup of uh, things that I've tried that didn't work, and that's okay. Because each one of these things has taught me things about the Linux kernel that I didn't know before. Playing with this let me learn about multi-seat setups, even if they didn't work. And that led me to my video on the two gamers, one CPU. So if I wouldn't have tried this, I wouldn't have made that video. And this was only 10 bucks, so I'm not really that sad about it. But it led me down the path of the Linux kernel and finding old forum posts of people saying, if you recompile the kernel, and add some additional USB devices, this old driver from 2005 actually supports hardware from 2009. And I tried that, and I compiled the Linux kernel, and it still didn't work. But I learned more about how the Linux kernel works, how X works. All good things to know. So where does that leave me? Well, I had a fun time. I learned a lot of things. This video came out of it and tells you all what I did wrong. So next time you're thinking about buying a Wise Zero client from 2010 or so, don't. It's probably not going to work for you. See you guys on the next adventure.